Hey, Steve Mignotti here for Blueprint Engines in a room with three of what I call maybe some of the most important people in the organization. Uh, we have Chris Larson, Director of Product Management, Pete Stout, who's Sales Manager, and Johnny McDevitt, Product Manager. Now, you guys pretty much determine which package engines wound up in your catalog, and there's 200 of them, and which new products might or might not make reality. How do you come up with those decisions? Well, first, Steve, we appreciate the compliment of calling us the three most important people, or three of the most important, but everybody is important in our organization. Uh, basically, the way we decide to, to come out with a new product is we, we do a feasibility study on that product, and, and we, we basically have to get a case from sales or product development, why should we build this product? Okay. And Steve, a lot of those inputs that we get are from employees, from customers, from attending trade shows, and just listening to the voice of the market. And so, to be honest, some of the best ideas for the most successful products that we have today probably weren't organic ideas that we came up with. It was listening to the market, listening to what customers wanted to buy, bringing that feedback to our team, sharing it with Chris and with Johnny and saying, guys, here's what the customer's requesting. Engine configurations, displacements, you know, maybe even just a, a, a horsepower target and a cost and then our team gets together and really figures out, okay, how do we get to that end zone? That's exactly right. So we'll take all that feedback from whether it's internal or external, and we'll really build a market analysis case for that particular offering that we're looking at. Can we build it? Can we build it for our, the correct cost? Can we build it for what the customer will pay for it? Can we meet horsepower on it? Can we meet torque on it? And then how many of them are we gonna sell? Is it really a great case to make that engine? Is it a low volume? Is it high volume? And we have to make sure it meets the blueprint quality standards as well. If it is engine something we don't typically do every day already, we really have to look at it and say, can we develop this and can we give it the blueprint name successfully and make sure it has that high point in the marketplace? And as it goes to the market, you know, Chris has been here over 20 years. I've been here over 12. Johnny's a lifetime hot rodder before he even came into the organization. Every year, the market changes. That's, that's just the state of business. We have competitors making changes. The market changes. We have to change because if we don't, we don't grow. And we've been very fortunate over the last 10 years to have really exponential growth. And so that keeps the pressure on our team to be innovative, come out with new products. So it's not only looking at what the competition's doing, but as Chris mentioned, it's being innovative organically to create new products and be an industry leader and bring new technology. That's exactly right. And from there, we can even take it a step further. It might not just be about a brand new engine from scratch. It might be taking an existing configuration and making sure it has the right oil pans, the right alternator if we dress one out, right power steering pump making sure that not only is the configuration great for the marketplace, it's good for that end consumer that's either gonna install it himself or have his shop stall it. Some of our largest competitors out there, first thing you have to do to their engine is pull their oil pan off because it doesn't fit anything and throw a different one on that the customer had to go out and source themselves. If we can look at those configurations and kind of pick apart some of the other shortcomings in the industry or other offerings out there, we can expand upon them. We'd much rather sell something that the oil pan stays on when it goes into the chassis. And to that point, it makes it easier for the customer, easier for us, and it even safeguards the customer from sourcing some of those components incorrectly themselves or having to call us back and ask more questions. It just, we do everything we can to, to really give the customer an end product that meets their expectations and we know is going to last in the field. It kind of hits that point of hitting them where they ain't. And of course, they once said, uh, if you build a better mousetrap, the world will beat a path to your door. And, you know, mouse, small block, of course, Chevrolet launched the small block, what, 70 something years ago. You guys have made that so much better with a lot of in-house parts, blocks, cranks, rods, pistons, heads. Uh, what's next in, in fleshing out the engine so that it'll be all 100% blueprint. I mean, it's pretty close now. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it, I don't even know that there is something. I mean, really the next thing is fuel systems. Okay. You know, aside from having our own fuel system, our engines are 100% blueprint product right now. Yeah. And part of the reason we did that, Steve, is, you know, it's vertical integration. And, and what we by more of that content that we have ownership in the design and the tooling for, we're able to control that quality. And again, going back to being customer customer centric, you know, it's the quality of the final engine that we're concerned about. Well, it, it migrates all the way back to this block. Mm -hmm. And in a period of time where we were buying blocks from other aftermarket manufacturers, we would discover there being quality issues. But as we gather our hands on all of those components, whether it's pistons, connecting rods, intake manifolds, I mean, you name it, 
we control the keys to that castle. It won't change and it's designed specifically for our needs. Needs being to make sure that the customer has a, has a quality product. And that is one of the most exciting things about working at this company and where this company has come and the direction that we're going. It used to be when we talked about, hey, let's get into this space that we're not in right now. Maybe it's an engine that we don't even do currently and there's not really that many in the market that are doing a great job at it. It used to be, can we get a season block for that engine mm. and start from there and what of our parts are going to put into that offering? Now, when a new engine comes up, we're not even in that space, one of the first conversations has is, do we need to make a block for that engine? Do we need to just start with a blueprint block? Are we just gonna make our own blueprint heads? So it isn't necessarily going to those suppliers or even starting with a season offering and saying, can we build this and can we get cores? It is, do we start fresh? Even on a fairly modern engine that is still out there in the world, one of the first conversations we have is, should we make a block for this and should we do heads? Well, these are some of the guys who helped to make those part numbers in the catalog, those crate engines that wind up in your hot rod and make it faster. These guys make it happen. And they're just part of the picture of what makes Blueprint your premium choice in aftermarket and high performance crate engines. To learn more, go to BlueprintEngines.com and stick around for more crate engine tech with me, Steve Mignanti.